Hi everyone, welcome to the first video on reinforcement learning. In this video, I will give you a gentle introduction to the Bellman equation, which is a big deal equation in reinforcement learning. So first I would like to recap the basic elements of reinforcement learning, just so that we're on the same page. So we have a learning agent. You can think of it as a robot capable of navigating or interacting with some environment. Then we have the environment itself, where any state uh, within that environment that the agent can be in is denoted as S. We have an action A that the agent can execute in an environment. And that action has the ability to take the agent to some new state, let's say S prime. And we have rewards that the agent receives by achieving certain goals in the environment. For example, by walking towards some terminal state, we can reward the agent with some positive reward R. So in this video, we'll consider a very small environment that only has six states. So this environment is a two by three grid where the agent can find himself in any of these six states. And for example, if the agent is here, then we say that he's in state one comma zero. And we also give the agent the ability to execute one of the four actions. So go up, go down, go right, go left. And we also assume that if the agent performs an action that would cause him to leave the environment, so for example, if in that state he chooses to go left, then we assume he just stays in the old location. And we also need to specify some rewards. So let's say that there will be a plus one reward given to the agent in state zero comma two. If at any point of executing actions throughout this environment, the agent finds himself in location zero two, then we give him the plus one reward. And in any other state, he receives a zero reward. So the goal of reinforcement learning now is to establish what we call an optimal policy. That is an optimal action to take at every possible state in the environment. And here's one example of a policy that tells the agent exactly which action to execute in each of the states. And this is, however, not an optimal policy, right? And you can see that it's not an optimal policy because, for example, in the state one comma two, the agent would move left instead of going up directly to get the plus one reward. So with this policy in state one comma two, the agent is actually three hops away from receiving that reward, while he could be just one hop away if the action was to go up, right? But anyway, we'll use this particular policy uh, throughout the rest of this video, even though it's not an optimal one. And by the way, policies are denoted pi, uh, typically in the reinforcement learning literature, uh, where for the optimal policy, you will typically see the notation pi star. So as part of training the reinforcement learning agent, we need to solve a very specific problem, which is we need to numerically evaluate how valuable is being in each possible state in the environment, given some current policy pi. And Bellman equation lets us solve this problem. So we'll now build the Bellman equation step by step. And let's start by writing out this uh, specific sequence of rewards, which we call the total payoff. And it's composed of rewards are received in each state that the agent visits, starting from some initial state as zero. So to visualize this, let's say that and the S0 is over here, and that's the one comma zero state. And under the current policy, the agent is told to move up. So the next state, S1, is zero, zero. Then the agent moves right. Uh, so S2 is zero comma one, and so on. Now this expression sums up all the rewards that the agent receives as he moves over the environment. But this one catch, uh, the future rewards are discounted in some way uh, using this discount factor gamma. So this discount factor gamma, it's a number between zero and one. 
we often choose it to be around 0 0.9. And notice that if gamma is zero, then future rewards don't matter at all, right? The total payoff is only composed of this immediate reward, which the agent receives just by the virtue of waking up in a particular state. But by setting gamma to a non-zero number, we allow the future rewards to be taken into account. And you can think of this as giving the agent a growth mindset. So the agent is not just focused on immediate rewards, but he also values such movement through the environment that rewards him later on. And this is a really powerful concept uh, in reinforcement learning. Now, if we were able to compute the expected value of this total payoff, that would give us something that we call a value function. And it's a number that tells us how valuable is being in the current state, S0 in this case, uh, given the awards that await us in the future. And as you can see from this whole summation, uh, this is a really tedious expression to compute once the environment gets large. Uh, because here we only have six states, but what if we had 100 possible future states to account for, right? We would have to account for all the 100 possible rewards that the agent can receive. And th this summation is pretty tedious to do, but we are going to introduce a couple of math tricks uh, to make this equation way more tractable. So here's a couple of math tricks. So first of all, I'm going to factor out one gamma in front of these future rewards. So all I did here is I pulled that gamma out front. Uh, so this, for example, this used to be gamma squared. Now it's just the gamma. And now we can distribute the expected uh, value and notice that this whole expression is really the value of being in state S1, right? This expression has got the same structure to the expression that we had for S0. Uh, it's just that indices for the states got shifted by one. So you can look at this as a value of being in the immediate next state, so S1 in this case, that is achievable from the current state, S0. So we are ultimately left with this expression, and we know that the immediate reward is certain, so its expected value is simply equal to that reward, and this becomes the second term, so gamma times the value of being in the immediate next uh, state. Now this equation is much simpler, but notice that it's got this recurrent nature. So for example, we're computing the value of being in state as zero. And to do that, we need the value of being in state S1. But how would we get that value? Well, to get that value, we'll need to uh, have the value of being in state S2 and so on. So it's got this recurrent nature, but actually it will soon turn out that this is easily solvable as a linear system of equations. So stay with me for just a little longer. So we'll make things a bit more general. Um, and we've arrived at this equation and I'm just going to change the notation a little bit so that this is valid for any current state and its immediate next state. So I will rewrite this equation like this. And all I did here is I swapped S0 for S, just to make it more general, and I swapped S1 for S prime, S prime being the immediate future state. And now let's account for one more thing. So what if there's actually more than one possible next state achievable from any current state, right? This could happen, for example, if we had an imperfect robot that we know can malfunction sometimes. So we might tell it to go in a particular direction and it will actually do something else. So for example, if we tell the robot to go up in the current state S, uh, there might be a 95% chance that the robot actually goes up and executes that action. 
but there's also a 5% chance that the robot will move right and enter this state as the immediate next state. So now we just want to account for this in, in this value function equation, and we can do that by simply allowing more than one possible future state using this summation. So here P is what we call the transition probability. In the case of this example, this would be 0.95 probability of entering this state as the S prime and 0.05 probability of entering this as S prime. So this summation would go over two elements in this case. And typically this summation will be over a small number of elements because usually only a handful of states are immediately achievable from any current state. Now this equation is the Bellman equation that we wanted to build. And it's a very important equation that lets us solve reinforcement learning problems. Now, if we write Bellman equations for our simple environment, it leads to a simple system of six linear equations. So we have six possible states, and we can write the Bellman equation for each state, and we'll have six such equations. So the first one, for example, um, the value of being in state 0, 0. Uh, the second one would be for the value of being in state 0, 1, and so on. And that's really easy to solve. So let's, let's do exactly that. So let's write the system of Bellman equations exactly uh, for this simple environment. And this is our template for each uh, Bellman equation. And just to make things super simple, I will also assume that all transition probabilities are equal to one in this problem, so our robot executes all actions perfectly. So these are our states that, and, and the policy, and, and, and this is the system of Bellman equations. So for example, the first one, the value of being in state zero comma zero, is equal to the immediate reward that the agent will receive in that state 0, 0, plus gamma times the value of being in state 0, 1, because that's the immediate next state that will be achieved after executing this action go right. And at this point, writing out the Bellman equations becomes just the bookkeeping of all the states that will be entered after each current state. And the only unusual Bellman equation uh, over here is this one for the state 0, 2, because this is our terminal state, so that one over here. So the agent only receives the reward and the game kind of ends. So there are no possible future states. And you can also think of this as setting all of those uh, transition probabilities to zero in, in that state. Uh, so that's why there's nothing, there's zero standing to the right of this reward. Now this system is so simple that we can actually solve it ourselves. Uh, for example, uh, this is the only non-zero reward and all the other rewards are zero. And we can set the discount gamma to be 0 0.9. Uh, and so now, now we know the value uh, of being in state 0, 2, it's equal to 1. We can substitute it over here. And then we know the value of being in state 0, 1. We can substitute it over here, and so on. But let's actually solve this uh, system of equations in Python. And to do that, we'll need to rewrite these equations in matrix form. And you can do that if you gather all the unknowns so the value functions on one side and all the constants on the other side, you can, you can write it in a matrix form. Uh, so this is how the Bellman equations look like in a matrix form. So for example, in the first equation, if we subtract uh, gamma times the value of being in state 0, 1 from both sides, uh, we get this first row in the matrix equation. So we have one times a value in state 0, 0 minus gamma times value in state 0, 1, and that's equal to 0. 
And the only non-zero entry in this right-hand side vector is this one, where we, uh, where the agent receives the plus one reward. So these are the Bellman equations in the matrix form, and now can we can use our favorite linear algebra solver uh, to solve for these unknown um, value functions. So we can solve this uh, in Python using just NumPy. Uh, and we specify the discount, which is 0 0.9. And uh, we specify the dimensions of the environment. And we also compute the total number of states, uh, which is 6 in this case, the width times the height. And now we need to code the arrays from that matrix form of the Bellman equation. So this is A, the matrix A, for example. And notice that it actually starts as an identity matrix, but then it has got these additional minus gamma terms. Uh, so we can initialize it as an identity matrix. And then we just fill in uh, all the entries that have this minus gamma. And finally, we can print that matrix just to double check, make sure that we coded it right. So for example, we have this <clears throat> minus gamma over here, which is this entry. And there's minus gamma over here, which is this entry. And then we construct the right-hand side vector, let's call it B. And its only non-zero element is this one. So we can build that uh, array in NumPy. We can also print this. And this is the only non-zero element. And then we actually solve for the vector of unknowns, uh, which are the value functions. And we will use the linalg.solve function from NumPy to solve this. So we just pass this arrays. And uh, the last thing I'm doing here is I'm reshaping that vector of unknowns to match the shape of our environment. Because once we compute it with the linear algebra, algebra, algebra solver, this is a one-dimensional array. So I'm just reshaping it uh, so that it's easier to visualize the values uh, of each state. And this is our solution, right? So we can visualize these unknown values. So we now have the answer to the question, how valuable is being in each state under the current policy? and our linear equation solver gave us the exact answer. Uh, so we started off with this policy and this environment, and now these numbers specify how valuable is being in each state given that policy. And for example, this state is pretty valuable, and it's understandable because it's just one hop away from receiving the plus one reward, right? On the other hand, this state is less valuable, even though it's directly below the state that rewards the agent. And the reason for this is that under the current policy, this state is actually three hops away from the terminal state. So it's less valuable than this one, and it's even less valuable than this state. So in the next video, we'll write a more general Python code that solves for the value function for an environment of any size. And we'll also add the ability to place arbitrary rewards in various uh, states. And you can check the link below to access the Jupyter Notebook with the code from this video. And if you'd like to support my efforts in creating open source educational materials like this one, you can also find the link below. So stay tuned for the second part.